guys, it's Julie and it's another day of VEDA. I would love to explain why I didn't put up a video yesterday and now this one is coming up so late. It is still Saturday. However, since this is such a heavy topic and I potentially have new people watching who are not familiar with what I got going on here, I'm not going to deflect too much by going into that, but I'll explain in another video because I'll be seeing you tomorrow and I hope to put two videos up to make up for this lapse this time. Just a quick reminder that I am still attempting to raise 5k to launch my podcast and you can support by becoming a Smart Brown Girl patron. Links down below and in the eye above and also shop smart brown girl caught my apparel and help support so many ways all details are down below is it possible to separate the art from the artist have we not done it before there are so many complexities that are brought up in the nate parker rape case that it's hard to pick one point to start at it is unfortunate that the story of nat turner is caught up in this very dubious acts but this is a necessary conversation so we're gonna have it. In 1999, Nate Parker and his friend John Celestine were student athletes at Penn State University. They were charged with the rape of another student who we'll call Mercy. Mark Mercy had had previous consensual sex with Parker. This was 17 years ago. Parker was acquitted having all his charges dropped. Celestine was found guilty initially of sexual assault and not guilty of rape. However, through the appeal process in 2005, Celestine was able to get his case dropped by arguing that his defense attorney in the initial case that found him guilty in 2001 was an ineffective lawyer. This was partially precipitated by the fact that when Celestine was able to gain a retrial in 2004, the prosecutors of the case decided that it was not worth the hassle to track down all the witnesses who at this point were spread across the country to pursue this case again, even though the victim was actually willing to re-testify. If you do nothing else, read the phone transcript of the recorded call between Mercy, Parker and at some point Celestine gets on the call. According to the court documents and the recorded phone call, Celestine and Parker pursued the young lady and harassed her, an attempt to convince her that the rape did not happen. It is a fact that this is not a conspiracy. 17 years later, this case is coming back up because Nate Parker granted two interviews to two major outlets, I believe Variety and Dateline, to discuss the particulars of this rape case. This case has received some slight media attention before, though Parker himself has never responded until this year. Yes, this has gained steam, but it's not just because Parker has reached mainstream fame, it's also because he's producing a major blockbuster film with the same friend who was initially found guilty in this case. This has largely been overlooked in the discussion about why this case is now getting so much media attention. Previously, when it was just Parker, as the actor and one in the media, it was easy to dismiss this case because he had been acquitted. But now that he has to both defend himself and Celestine, who again was initially found guilty, people are gonna dig deeper into the facts of this case. I do see people wagging their fingers at this invisible audience of R. Kelly fans who are calling for the boycott of Birth of a Nation. Honestly though, is R. Kelly still selling out tours? Is R. Kelly still as famous as he was in the 90s? Is he matching to the level of his peers from that era? Missy Elliott, Mary J. Blige, Puffy? I'm not getting off track, but I am questioning those who use R. Kelly to justify their support of Parker. Because in the world I live in, people have stopped supporting R. Kelly due to his pedophilic ways. Personally, I haven't seen anyone call for the explicit boycott of Birth of a Nation. I have seen people work through and explain why they are not supporting Parker and Celestine, and therefore they will not be financially supporting or going to see Birth of a Nation. And acknowledge that if you want to go see Birth of a Nation, by all means go, no one's actively trying to stop you. It is totally possible to separate the art from the artist, but you have to actually separate them. And that means you can't justify seeing the film by downplaying rape. Whether you see Birth of a Nation or not, at the very least, the actions of Celestine, according to the facts of this case, are pretty clearly rape. And while most of the focus has been on Parker, 
The bigger issue for me is the lack of conversation around Lestine, that he hasn't issued any sort of apology. His statement has just said that he has moved on, he was found innocent, which is not true, and that he has built a career and a family and he would like to be left alone from this. At no point has Celestine's innocence actually been proven. Both men admitted to having sex with Mercy that night. Both claimed it was consensual. Celestine admitted he did not wear a condom. Even with Parker, to have a case drop does not mean you're explicitly innocent. It just means that according to the prosecution, they don't feel that there's enough evidence for them to pursue a case against you. This takes into account both the financial cost of pursuing a court case and the evidence at hand. Parker was able to argue that because he had previously had consensual sex that both him and Mercy acknowledged, therefore the sex that night was consensual. I guess there is some positivity in realizing that a large swath of black Americans have never dealt with the American court or judicial system. But as someone who recently went through a lawsuit, I duly understand that the American legal system is 100% set up to protect those who have the most money to spend. Lawyers are generally expensive and it's not just about finding a lawyer that you can hire, it's also about finding a lawyer who finds your case to be financially beneficial for them to invest the time to pursue. So in theory, it's much easier for someone who is very likely guilty and has a lot of money to spend to get a lawyer than it is for someone who is the victim and doesn't have the capital to spend to procure a lawyer. Because as a lawyer, if I see the odds stacked against you but I see a loophole, I can charge you a much larger retainer up front because I know I'm gonna spend a lot of time on this and if you have that retainer to give to me, it's twenty, thirty thousand dollars and you have those funds to drop, I'm gonna sign you on. Celestine is set to benefit career-wise and financially as a co-writer of Birth of a Nation. I find it a failure of our judicial system that he could not only get off after being charged, but that he was charged with sexual assault, but not rape after admitting to having sex with the young lady. Now, this is a sign of where we were at with our definitions of rape and sexual assault in 1999. As of today, in most states and institutions, sexual assault is any sexual act that is non-penetration and non-consent. Rape is any form of penetration without consent. That means that even if you are having sex, the person consented to vaginal sex, but not anal sex, and you proceed to forcefully flip this person over and penetrate them without their consent rectally, that's rape. For Celestine to be found guilty of sexual assault and not rape means that the court conceded that Mercy did not consent to some form of sexual acts, though there wasn't enough information for them to find him guilty of penetrating her without consent. I don't, I don't understand how that works. I am confounded that people can understand that Tamer Rice was murdered, even though the two men who murdered him, after the district attorney reviewed their case, they decided to not charge them with anything. How we can understand in that matter that the judicial system we have set up is a failure, but somehow it is blindly believed that the judicial system got it right with Parker and Celestine. We as black women are faced with the many complexities of the intersectionality of being black and woman, and for myself and others, layered on by being victims of rape. I can support my people and my community and still understand that there are monsters among us. I'm not falling into the same blind trap that OJ Simpson used to get black women to support him. There are plenty of parallels between Parker and OJ. And please, if you have not, go watch OJ's 30 for 30. It is very enlightening. As much as folks are quick to blame black women for like everything, we are the ones that uphold and support our community the most. And that I find myself debating other black women on this and then turn around to black men who drank the poisonous Kool-Aid that is hidden colors telling me that this whole situation is black women's fault. By and large, on my Facebook timeline, I have gloriously seen quite a few black men who poignantly understand 
what rape and consent actually is, who are breaking down the, the matters of this case. And even with those who are kind of walking the line on being able to call Parker a rapist, they're still not that far out that it's past having a conversation. I do see some positive evolution in how we understand how pervasive rape culture is in our society, though we still have a very long way to go. Namely, in that many ways, we do not understand how familiar rape can be. It's not always harsh and aggressive in a back alley. To be explicit, we don't understand that a woman's body can react in a certain way and it still be rape. That she can get wet, moan, or and it's still be raped. We do understand that men can be raped and not just anally. They can be raped by a woman forcing them to get hard and penetrating her. That same science that causes a penis to get hard against somebody's will is the same science that causes sexual bodily functions in a woman. When a person is blacked out, whether drunk or drugged, it is not that they are asleep and limp, it is that they are incoherent and have no understanding of their surroundings. This is part of what makes it so hard to successfully push charges in date rape. Look at the videos floating around of people coming out of anesthesia. They can talk, but they're lucid. They respond positively to familiar faces, but have no clue where they're at. So if you or I are half conscious and we're being raped by someone we're familiar with, someone we have had consensual sex with previously, your brain's first reaction is not to say that this is bad. There aren't magical daggers in the vagina to get a man out of you when you're out of it. You're trying to process where you're at, how you got there, why you're there, what you did to get yourself there, and everything is delayed. Essentially, Nate Parker's charges were dropped because he argued that he had consensual sex with Mercy before, and therefore that night, he and Celestine had sex with her. It was consensual. This is not outlandish to understand. When someone does not have their faculties, you should not have sex with them because they can't in good faith and in good mind consent. Only did Parker have sex with Marcy per his own friend's testimony who was there that night. He ushered in this guy and Celestine to come into the room while he was having sex with her. Where is the right in this? Girl explicitly asked Nate, can you tell me who else was in the room that night? When I woke up the next morning groggy on my stomach, you were having sex with me. That's not consent. That's waking up and being unaware of your surroundings and being like, oh shit, like what's happening? She does not have to kick, scream, or yell to make it rape. In my own situation, I drank a half cup of like strawberry daiquiri that I had made and realized I was about to be blackout drunk. Like I threw up and it was just like, what? Now I believe I was drugged, but I never pressed charges. My first reaction was to think of what I did to get myself. Thought I drank too much. I lived in Brooklyn and no one wants to waste their time at Woodhill Hospital. I didn't want to send my Saturday at the police station in bed It's his words against mine and no one sees rape coming and remembers of taking all the accounts of that night. I don't even remember what happened that night or how we got there. I can't afford a lawyer. I have to take off work. I can't afford that. The introspection to my life isn't worth the hassle. And it took me days to understand that I was raped and I did nothing to abide in it. I was raped by someone I knew who I invited into my home, raped while my friends were in the house. I did not scream, yell, or kick. I remember realizing I was drunk and going to throw up. I passed out in my room. I woke up, no clue how long I had been passed out, with this guy, Teddy, standing in my bedroom. I remember walking him back downstairs, half-assed pushing him out the door, going back upstairs, and passing out again. Then get up, I threw up again. I said, F it, I'm not gonna brush my teeth again this time because whatever's going on with me is really bad and then I proceeded to pass out again. The next time I woke up, Teddy was on top and inside of me. Everything was in slow motion. I remember thinking, why am I having sex with half of my clothes? I hate being clothed during sex. My first thought wasn't that it was rape. I didn't remember what day or time it was. I thought it was a dream. I remember thinking like, why is your mind so dirty? Like, yo, like change this thought came back to her I'm like who is this how is this oh shit it's Teddy wait he has a girlfriend why are we sleeping together she lives with him why am I having sex with him what did I do to get myself here literally my first thoughts were to try and process with half my mind how I got myself in this position of having sex with this man I had no desire to have sex with now think about do you understand the mind fuck of waking up in a daze in the same situation with someone you are sexually attracted to maybe Mercy did want to have sex with Nate but would she have consented under those circumstances for me I have no idea how much time passed before I came to enough that I could get Teddy off of me 
And yes, the name is literally Teddy. It's not a made up name. I was laying there trying to connect my brain to my mouth to say something and I couldn't move. And then he went to put his mouth to mine. And all I remember is that the last cognizant thought I could remember was that I had thrown up and I had not brushed my teeth. And that is disgusting because I could still taste the throat on my mouth. And that jolted me enough to say something, to finally be able to say loudly, this is disgusting. And I can't tell you how I got him to stop. Like, I remember trying to get pushed my leg up and being like, my leg just felt really heavy. I didn't even get him, walk him all the way down. See, I just remember him getting out of the door and me locking the door and then passing back. I didn't wake up the next morning and tell my homeboys that I was raped. I woke up the next morning, took a shower, walked downstairs, and told them that I had fucked Teddy. Like, that's literally what I said. And they were like, wait, how? And I'm like, I don't know. I was mad drunk and I woke up and we were having sex. And my homeboy had to say, Jay, that's not sex. That's rape. I had to have someone else tell me that I was raped and it still didn't connect. Much like it didn't connect with Mercy as she questions Parker and then Celestine on that recorded phone call. As Celestine tells her that she has imaginary friends is making things up. I'm rehashing my own story because I want people to understand how simple and easy it is for rape to happen. How easy it is for the good guy to be the rapist and how the pervasiveness of rape culture makes it hard for the victim to even understand what rape is. If after all of this, the importance of seeing Nat Turner's story told on the big screen is more important than the egregious actions taken on by Celestine and Parker, who co-wrote the movie, I have no interest in arguing you down off that because I do think it's possible to separate the art from the artist. Even if for me, the details of this case disgust me so much. But I do want you to walk away understanding the gravity of rape. How simple the definition is for both rape and consent and, and to continue to counsel communities to push back against the rape culture that is so ingrained in our society. We still have a lot of work to do. For two to five dollars or more, you can support Smart Brown Girl and help to launch the Smart Brown Girl podcast, tour, scholarship fund, and flourishing community of awesome Smart Brown Girls. Visit patreon.com slash Julesy and become a Smart Brown Girl patron today.